right cool so as i say we're going with pace we're going fast if anybody have any questions just stop me at any time right and i'm going to be asking all the questions right through so consumer arithmetic is basically money spending i think everybody um have exposure to this so let me not waste time we'll go straight into wages so we're talking about a salary now and we have what a gross now it's two words that i really want to pay attention to gross and net right so gross is the amount of money if you're getting paid a salary the amount of money that you get paid that is your gross pay right but then now when you get paid that money when you get paid the gross pay you're not carrying all that money home yet you're gonna get deduction right so deductions will come in the form of taxes or bills or whatever so the amount of money that you actually get to carry home that is your net so you have the gross which is the amount of money you get paid and your net is the amount of money that you're actually carrying home after your deductions so obviously in this case there the monthly salary your gross monthly salary multiplied by 12 will give you the yearly salary so if you just get a gross monthly salary of six thousand dollars then times 12 you get seventy two thousand dollars for the year right and of course this is your gross yearly salary but it might not necessarily be the amount of money you actually carry home we can see here that every month though even though you get a gross salary you get deducted 500 so it's actually this amount of money that you carry home and of course this multiplied by 12 will give you your net um yearly so everybody cool with this cool yeah right cool so we're moving on right so all of these things so gross and net make a, a thing with that we have a question here and you guys are gonna do this question um the gross monthly salary of a manager is and you all have your calculators oh my dear good so have your calculators ready because i too lazy and you all have to do something so the gross monthly salary of a manager is that calculate his net annual salary after deduction of that were made monthly right so you have a gross monthly salary and they want the net annual salary you know how to we know how to do the question now but i want you to tell me how to do the question because you can use both right it'll just be doing it differently so remember the gross monthly i'll call it our gross gross um, let me not be lazy. <laughs> monthly. So the gross monthly is sixty-seven fifteen. Okay. And what they say in here? Um, calculate the net annual. So the net annual yearly. Okay. And and this is this is always good. Write down the information that you have. Right after deductions of nineteen seventy-six were made monthly. So the gross monthly is this. 6750 and then monthly we have deductions of 1976 so that would give us 6750 minus 1976 Caitlin I'm making you my calculator lady right you had to work it out before me and give me the answer before me right um, 47 39. So what they're trying to say here is the gross is the amount of money you're getting paid, 67.50. But then they're going to take out taxes or insurance or some other figure, NIS, something. And this net, net monthly, is the actual amount that you are carrying home. That is how much money you have in your pocket. So now that we know the net monthly, 47 39 multiplied by the 12 is going to give me my net annual and I am not going to write the answer because you had to do that for homework right so this is what we're talking about we're just discussing the question through and you actually do it yeah so um so we uh, everybody cool with this though any questions you're all okay now what um what Ariel was gonna do is she was gonna find the the 
Grossierly, which you could do that the 67, 15 times 12. And that will actually give you your, um, your Grossierly. And let me just see what that is. 67, 15 times 12, the Grossierly, which is 80, 580 and you notice I write in scrappy so that you will have a hard time copying it <laughs> but no that's not why I write in scrappy so um so 80 blah 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 and then she would have had to go and take the deductions and multiply by 12 to get the total yearly deductions which would be 19 when my calculator lady times 12 and that's 23 blah 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 and then when you minus the yearly gross from the yearly deductions you will also get the same answer as that so i'm moving on if anybody have any problems just stop me. feel free to stop me. i mean all of this is basic stuff so let me just keep going right basic wage so the basic wage is a, a wage um sorry paid at a rate per hour so i think right now where's the current minimum wage in trinidad anybody know? Seventeen. Uh, I think. I think at one point it was fifteen, and then they raised it to seventeen. Yes. So yeah. right. So 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 this is a basic wage, and you know when you get you know minimum wage, it doesn't have to be seventeen. Um, you know some nurses get paid like twenty five dollars an hour. So so a basic wage could be set at anything, but it is a, a a rate per hour when you're getting paid per hour. Normally a five day work week at eight hours a day. Now this is. This is when you get back at this document, this is the, the, the stuff that you had to make a note of, right? A 40 hour work week. So when you work five days a week at eight hours a day, five eights are 40. A 40 hour work week is called a basic week, right? So when they ask you what is a basic week, that is a basic week, you had to know, right? 10 days is a fortnight. And that is approximately two weeks or 18 hours. Yeah. So um, so you have the 40 hours for one week, 80 hours for two weeks, and that is what you call a fortnight. So if you hear man get getting paid by the fortnight, is every two weeks they're getting paid, and this is called a basic wage, right? So we have this question here, tell me how to do it real quick. A refinery operator works at a basic wage of $35 an hour. 30, no, no, at a basic week, right? Sorry. A refinery operator works a basic week of 35 hours. So that is his basic week, is around 40 hours, 35 hours, right? At a basic rate of that. Calculate the basic wage for that week. Where have you do? Thirty-five times fourteen, eh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Fourteen per hour, right? Uh, by thirty-five hours, that is it. All right, good to go. Anybody have any problem? No, simple stuff, right? You know, as I say, we're knocking off the easiest things first. So that's why I want to just get a cool thing done, right? Um, overtime wage. Now, when you work your basic week. Right? That is your 40 hours. You get paid that basic rate. Right? That um that what you call it the basic wage. Right? But then sometimes you could work overtime. So instead of working nine to five, the boss might ask you to work till seven. So you gotta get extra two hours now. Right? So this is overtime wage. And it have um, four different types of overtime wage that you will hear about in the working world. Now, this wage is for extra time, right? So it's time added on to the basic wage in addition to the basic week worked, right? So the time and a quarter obviously is time. The time that you worked, which is 100%, right? That is your basic week. Your basic week is the 100%. Plus, you work another quarter of the time, 25%. So time and a quarter is 125% basic rate, or 1.25 multiplied by the basic rate. So if it is that I get paid $100 for the week, 
right? And I worked time and a quarter for the week, then I would have gotten 125, so I'd have get $25 extra. Everybody okay with this? Yeah. Right? Caitlin, you're cool, right? All right, so time and a half is a 100 and, uh, 150%, right? So you work 100 hours, and then you work 50 hours extra, 150% or 1.5 of the basic rate, right? So 1.25 is time and a quarter. So if the, if the question say time and a quarter, you multiply by 1.25. If they say time and a half, you multiply by 1.5. And then have double time multiplying by two, triple time multiplying by three. It's elementary, right? So, here's the question. Tell me what to do. A secretary works a 35 hour week in which she is paid that. So, that's her basic week. So, she gained basic week, right? That is the amount that she gets for the 35 hour week. She works six hours overtime on Saturday, which is paid at time and a half, and four hours on Sunday, which is paid at double time. So the basic that she got, the total for the work week for 35 hours is $262.50, right? She work six overtime hours at on Saturday in which she get paid time and a half so time and a half and then she work four overtime hours on the Sunday in which she get paid double time so how much money she work out at the end of the week So we'll take one as a hundred percent. So one point five or one and a half. One and a half times. Half time and a half. So she make one and a half times the basic rate. Okay? And then for double time now, you have the basic wage times two. Okay? And of course, so she so so how much money she carrying home is the two sixty two fifty, that's the basic wage, plus the time and a half plus the double time. That is the amount of money that she carries. Are they cool with that? Sometimes when you're selling, you know, I don't know if you ever heard the term commission before, but what it is, is, is a percentage, right, of the total value of a product, okay? and is awarded to the salesperson who sold the product. So if I sell in a fridge, for standards, right? I sell in a fridge. Well, I gain a basic wage, you know, right? I gain a basic wage. I get in a basic wage of five dollars an hour for a week. Right? But if I sell this washing machine, I will get a commission. Right? The commission is a percentage of the washing machine. So the amount of money I carry in home, the gross wage, well, yeah, the amount of money I'm walking out there with is my normal wage plus the commission, right? So here's the example. A car salesman is paid this basic wage. In addition, he is paid a commission of 1.5% of a value of cars sold. So during a certain week, he sold cars valued at this and this. So like he sells two cars. And these were the value of the car. So that means that on each car, he making a commission of 1.5%. So we can work it out now. On the first car, he made a commission of um, 97000 97 dollars how do we find 1.5 percent of 97 he make one point out of the 97 thousand he get 1.5 percent of that right 
right? 1.5. 1.5 oh, so where's my thing right? so 1.5 is 1.5 over 100 that is 1.5 percent so 1.5 percent of 97,000 so what does that work out to so when he sell this car he make a commission of 1,000 how much is it And then when he sell this car, he made the commission of what? 1.5 over 100 multiplied by 67, 68, 700, which is what? 1.5 times 687. Yeah, um, that's one So let me just say 130. So what he do now? Well, that means that he make the 600 plus this plus this. He make a lot of money on the commission, right? The 600 was the basic wage. But then he got paid a commission of 1.5%, right? Everybody okay with this? Yes. Yeah. All right, nice. We're moving on. Let me just go in. Now we're dealing with taxes. So let me see how taxes does go. Now, anybody who working above the minimum wage has to pay income tax. If you're working minimum wage, so our minimum wage is $75, some $17, right? If it is you're working minimum wage or below minimum wage, you have to pay no tax. But once you're working above a certain amount of money, you have to pay tax to the government, right? So the amount of money a person earns before tax is the gross. So after tax, what will it be called? Nice, right? An allowance is a part of the gross income that is not taxable. It is tax free. Let that suit. So that means the government allowing you that now. Yeah, don't worry, we are gonna tax that. Right? So we can see how this allowance thing does work. Yeah? Let me take a look at this question, right? This here is an example of an allowance. Sometimes the government will say, well, you're watch. If you're a single person, then $1,500 out of your salary will not be taxed. If you're a married person, then we wouldn't tax $2,500 out of your salary. So out of your salary, we got tax the rest, but we wouldn't tax that $2,500. If you have a child under 11 years, you might get a $400 allowance where there's going to be tax tax, right? Um, you know, and these are a dependent relative on national insurance. You might get these allowances. Those are portions of your salary that they will not tax, right? So a married man with two children aged 17 years old and nine years old earns this amount of money per year. So. He have what twenty five thousand six hundred dollars every year, and what they say he have kids age two, no age seven, seventeen, and nine. All right. So he supports a dependent relative. So a dependent relative, and also claims. For national insurance allowance. We have a child who is 17. So what allowances do we have for that? Any child over 16 years old, that means he get a $700 allowance. Right? Um, we have a child who is 9 years old. So any child under 11, he get a $400 allowance. Right? He supports a dependent relative. So dependent relative that is a $250 allowance and in national insurance is a $225 allowance and when you add all this up what you get a married oh very good we missed that one a married man look how we missed that very good look at that and that's his biggest allowance man $2,500 okay. Shizé did you miss that I missed that and what's your, what's your easy, what's your easy, could I get a question? I could have got a question wrong. Look at that. I think it's 
2,500. Well, my calculator lady dread. I'm doing it myself. I'm doing it myself. I'm not for a little work, but maybe we can get it done faster, you know. Right, 4,075 4, is the amount of money out of this that is not going to be taxed. So therefore, his taxable allowance is what? That minus, alright, so the, his gross salary minus this um this allowance will get what? Thank you for keying in there. Twenty one thousand five hundred. So this is the amount of money. This is the amount of income that they can tax. Remember, this is the gross income. This is the how much they allowing him. They allowing him this amount. So that means that they can tax. So this is the gross taxable income. And it's important when, that you understand when you put these terms together what they mean. Because after they tax this, then we go find out how much he does really make. Yeah. So his total taxable income, well look at it, look at we just find it here. Number three, the amount he pays, and look at that there. Eh? So this is the amount of money that they can tax, and now they're saying the amount of money he pays in tax per annum at 40%. So how much money this man paying in taxes? So the amount of money he getting is 21,525. And they're taxing him 40% of that. So how much are they taxing him? Yeah, but how do you get that? I don't want the answer. I want how. Yes, it is that easy. It's not rocket science. It's just that easy. Yeah, but I need you to say how. That's my job, right? Of, of this, and. Eh? And 40% of that is what? 86.10 Right? So then therefore The amount of money he pays He pays in tax every month Oh, well this is the Wait, wait, wait so it, How do you read this question? Right? The amount of money he pays in tax every month This is it, 86.10 Yeah, that's 40% of that The amount of money he pays in tax per annum Oh, so is levied at 40%, right? So this is the amount he pays per annum, 40%. But then the amount of money he pays every month would be divided by 12, eh? Yes, sir. Right. So everybody cool with this? Yes, sir. Scotia, no hearing from you at all. Yeah. All right. So we're going through with their next different kind of tax, right? Um, Scotia, you could take a little five-minute nap. I probably wouldn't call up on you. For like the next five minutes, I'll call it in my room. So you can sleep and just wake up, like set a time or something. Okay? It sounds like you're sleeping there, you know, I don't know if that's right. Okay? Um, so our next kind of tax is sales tax. So we're talking about taxes now. And if you notice what we did here, just like a little quick recap, we talk about wages, uh, we talk about salaries, um, we talk about basic wage, we talk about overtime wage, and commission. Right? These are the different types of wages. Now we're talking about the different types of taxes. We speak, we speak about income tax and allowance. Now we're talking about sales tax, VAT, value added tax. So where's our sales tax or where's VAT to show everybody here in VAT? Anybody know where it is? Yeah, kind of, right? It's like the government allowing us to have it. I don't know, <laughs> right? But a sales tax or a value added tax is applied by governments to certain items before those items are sold. So it's like how in Bird come and say, um, he going and tax apples and grapes. Because real people bringing in apples and grapes. And, and, and so he going to tax apples and grapes. So we have to pay more for apples and grapes. Because when you buy apples and grapes, some of that money has to go to the government. So that's a tax, right? So the tax, yeah, it's 
Yes, yes, they tax. And yeah, well, the reason why he taxed apples and grapes was because he found that we were, we as a country, were spending too much U.S. on on apples and grapes. Because when we buy apples and grapes, we just have to buy it in U.S. Because U.S. is the world currency. So if it is that we buy in anything in the world, we have to buy with U.S. And our U.S. running out because we're not making U.S. now. We only spend in U.S. Right? So we spend in too much U.S. So he's gonna tax apples and grapes, um, so that the government will get some of that money. Right? And not only that, but to discourage people from buying apples and grapes as well. Right? So he like he doing it for spite. So. This tax increases the retail price of the item. So that inclusive, when somebody, you know, when you buy a bottle of ketchup and you see that inclusive, that means that the bottle of ketchup costing uh, $10, well, that already have that in it. But if it don't have that in it, then when you reach by the cashier, the cashier might have to add the VAT there. Or the cashier might have to add some things. So you must pay attention to all of these things. You know, because you have VAT. VAT, you just pay VAT on pretty much almost anything that you buy in the grocery that we just import. And we just import everything. So we pay in VAT on everything. Government making real money, right? In the Caribbean, the VAT payable on items is 15%, you know. Right? So the price of an automatic washer without VAT is this. Calculate the price after VAT. We had it. You add the answer to that to 3473. 3473 plus the the percentage, you know, of what you get. Um, 520.95. Yeah. Right, and then will you just add that and you get your answer, right? Calculator lady, okay? Cool. Yeah, but use not the calculator lady, though. Where my calculator lady? She waken? <laughs> Why? So I, I, I choose the worst person to be calculator lady then. Yeah. Wait, why are you struggling to use the calculator though? <laughs> Wait, I saw her putting you under pressure and you panicking. That's what's going on. Yeah? <laughs> well, that's cool. I mean, I'm sorry, but um, when I assign a calculator lady for a class, that you can't take it back. So that means that you're stuck being the calculator lady for, uh, for the rest of the class. But don't worry, next time I'll try to remember. You know, and you, you had to step up, step it up, step it up, right? So let me, <laughs> let me go. Right, land and building tax. So we're talking about taxes. So the government taking money from your income. The government taking money from literally every single thing that you buy in. And then they're taking money from your land and your building too, right? The annual taxes paid by owners of land and building properties these taxes are called rates and this is where these little things is where I had to know where if I question say calculate the rates you had to know what kind of rates they're talking about so each property is given by the government a rateable value depending on how big it is you know? depending on the location depending on the condition and this is determined by an, uh, an assessment valuation. So the government will send an evaluator and he will give your property a valuation. And this is the um, next thing that they actually want to bring into play. Because we do, we do have um, a, a stamp duty. That is what we use as our property tax right now. We have to pay stamp duty. Stamp duty is a huge amount of money when you now buy a land and your house. But after that, you don't have to pay nothing, right? But I think the government wants to actually put a land and building tax where you have to pay every year, right? So it's like you're renting the land that you have now. Um, 
so essentially you have uh, so so they will send somebody to look at your property and assess make a valuation and then from that they will give your property a rateable value right so the rateable value is always much less than the actual value of the house it's like a percentage of it you know each land and building owner is then charged rates which are a percentage of the rateable value right so if your house costs a million dollars all right like let me just say your house costs ten thousand dollars and they come and evaluate it at ten thousand dollars they go give it a rateable value of a hundred or like like a thousand right so a part of that and then you will get taxed as a percentage of the smaller amount percentage of the thousand right so let me see how this entire thing is work with that question right uh, the rateable value of a house is 1625 so the rateable value is 1625 and you notice how i like to do questions eh? i don't ever like to read the whole question you read a piece you write it down given that the rates charged for that area are 25 cents on every dollar right so 25 cents on every dollar determine the amount of money the owner pays in rates every year how are we doing that right. that's pretty much it right 25 cents on the dollar is 0 0.25 so you have to be able to make that connection 25 cents on the dollar is 0 0.25 as i say this is easy stuff you take this you multiply by 0 0.25 so essentially a quarter of the rateable value is how much money that you will have to get paid in taxes everybody cool with this Right, so we talk about income tax, we talk about uh, VAT, we talk about land and building tax. Now we're moving on to sales, right? So this is the consumer arithmetic based on... And Ariel, aren't you just work with sales people? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of experience in everything that we're talking about, right? Yeah. Like you used to have to pay NIS something, right? Sorry? You, just, you, you ever paid NIS? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, so she, so she has a practical experience in everything that we're talking about. And once you go into the working world, you start to get paid. You have to start paying taxes, and you know you're dealing with wages and all of that. So this here is a very practical topic that you will use the minute you graduate from school. So in sales now, we're talking about profit and loss. I think everybody knows what profit and loss is, right? So we have. These two terms, the cost price, I buy, I buy a piano for $100, and then the selling price, I sell it for $1,000, and well, I make a profit of what, $900 there, so that was a pretty good profit I made, right? So I buy something at a cost price, and I sell it back at a selling price. And of course, the amount of money, the difference between these two is the profit, okay? The profit percentage. What percentage profit did I make? Well, I will take my profit being 900, and I will put it over the cost price, which is 100, and then I'll multiply that by 100. So la la, nine, I made 900% profit. Wow! I wish I could have made 900% profit in Samsung. Oh, that would have been dread, right? Now, of course, if it is that I buy that piano for $100, but then I had to sell it for $50, right? You notice that my selling price is less. You know, I'm selling it for less than what I buy it for, so I make a loss, right? I make a loss of $50. And what is the loss we do? I put profit percent. Well, I guess I guess we also call it a profit percent, but no, it'll be the loss percent. So sorry about that. The loss percent is the loss, which is fifty dollars over the cost price, one hundred, multiply by a hundred. Zap, zap. I make a loss. Um, all right. So everybody cool with this? Profit and loss. 
Now, take a look at this, right? The selling price is less than the cost price. You get a loss, obviously. The selling price is greater than the cost price. You get a profit. Let me go on before I start tripping. Profit and loss. So we have this one here. Shopkeeper buys 25 uh, cricket balls at a cost of $150. He sells each of them for eight dollars. What's the percentage profit that you make? How are you doing? You buy twenty-five cricket balls at one hundred and fifty dollars. Twenty-five cricket balls. Buy twenty-five cricket balls by eight dollars each to get to be able to sell them. Right. So this is what. So this is twenty-five by eight, which is. Cost price to find the so you see, right? So, so, so that you, you can see he made he made fifty dollars profit total, right? and then was the profit percentage? Is that over a hundred? Is it? It's not profit. Over. over the cost price, yes. Yeah. Multiply by a hundred. Right. So we work that out. If he sells them at five dollars each, what is the percentage loss? Well, it's the same thing, 25 by 5. That's 125, I think. So yeah. you can see he operated at a loss of $25. Loss. So you just had to find the loss percentage. 25 over the cost price. Multiply that. Everybody cool with this? Profit and loss? Yeah. I can't believe I cross out. How did I cross out these zeros, boy? I do so. I do so. No, I do so. That is a mistake I make. I do so, and then I do so, and so, and I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do there. Well, that's trippy. All right. So we're talking about percentage change here. So right? a man sold a refrigerator for this, right? making a profit of 15%. So you sell a refrigerator for $27.45. And he made 15% profit on the cost price. What is the cost price? How are we doing that? 15%. But the thing is, right, that he sell the fridge for $27.45, making a profit of 15%. Then? Yeah. So the 15% is already included in the 2745 eh? so the cost price because he made a profit of 15 percent so what if we take the cost price to be a hundred percent so if we take the cost price to be a hundred percent he make a, a, a profit of 15 percent so then this would be a hundred and fifteen percent then If that is 115%, well then we see there are 115%, that is the 100% cost price plus the 15% that he made. That is 27.45. Right? So then we could find out what the 100% is. Eh? We could find out, we could, we could do it two ways. We could find out what 1% is. Right? And then we could find out what 100% is. Multiplying by or we could use this multiplication factor thing, right? Where we actually could take the hundred percent over the one fifteen percent and multiply it by the twenty seven forty five. Right? So we'd have two different. Oops, sorry. What did I do? So it have two different ways that we could do this here. So if we um if we do it the first way here, we can see 1% to 2745 is 2745 divided by 115. That is 23.8687 actually. And then that multiplied by 100 is 2386. 2387. 
right? So we can see that this is the cost price. Yeah, and I think that this is the other, the, the, the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, the other way to do it is by using the multiplication factor. You just take the 100 and you put it over the 115% and you multiply it by the 2745 and you should also get 2387 or something like that. Everybody okay with this? Yeah. Right. So how do you do this now if you're, if you're so okay with it? A woman sold a car for $24.19 and she incurred a loss of 12%. So she sells the car, this is the amount of money that she gets, but this is a loss. Right? So incurring the loss of 12% on the cost price. So remember the cost price is $100, eh? 100%, right? So if you incur a loss, then this will be the cost price minus the loss. Eh? So this will be 88%. Eh? So you see this percentage change thing? And now you can kind of go through the same way to find your cost price. So check it out, right? It's, it's, really, it's really two different rules. One is profit, and one is loss. The loss is how I get 80%. Right? So if you make a profit of 15% on the cost price, so that means you're treating the cost price like 100%. You make a profit of 15%, so this will be 115%. You understand that? So it's the same kind of thing coming here now, right? The cost price is 100%, but you make a loss of 12%. So you can't add 112, no, you had to, you had to take 100 and minus 12, because you make a loss, eh? Yeah. So, so that's why this is 88% here, you understand? So you just look at this word. Maya, Cal, Cal, how you how are you doing? Okay. I mean, I didn't, uh, did I say Maya? Sorry, I meant Scotia. Uh, Maya is uh, a girl in my last class. Like, I'm still teaching me form one to three. Scotia, how are you feeling? Okay. What do you mean, okay? Tell me now, you're good, you're not good, what? You want me to, you want me to finish it? Or you think you can finish it? Okay. You want me to finish it? Yeah. All right. Well, that's not cool, right? So what? A man sold a fridge at this, right? Twenty-seven forty-five, and he make a profit of fifteen percent. So he make more money. But this is the more money, yeah? Because what you were saying is to find fifteen percent of that. But no, the fifteen percent is already in there. Yeah, right. So the fifteen percent is already in there. He make a profit of fifteen percent on the cost price. So if we treat the cost price like a hundred percent, he make a profit of fifteen percent. So that means that this will be a hundred and fifteen percent. You understand that? Scotia, right? So therefore, now if a hundred and fifteen percent is twenty-seven forty-five. Well, then we could find 1%, which is 27.45, divided by 115, which is 23.86. And now we could find the 100%. The 100% is the cost price, then. Eh? So they ask you to calculate the cost price. So the cost price here now is this multiplied by uh, 100, which is 23.86. So this is the cost price. This is the 15% profit. So you see how the 15% profit is included here, right? Yeah. Right. So um, in this case now is a loss. So we can imagine the cost price would be more, right? So um, so a woman sold a car at this amount and make a loss of 12%. So the cost price. I determine the cost price of the car. The cost price is 100%. She 
you make a loss of 12%. So therefore, this here is 88% of the cost price. Yeah. So this here is 88. So 88% 88 of the cost price is 21.49. Yeah. So 1% is just 21.49 divided by 88 is 24. Do that right, yeah. 24.42 and then a hundred percent, which is the cost price, will end up being 24.42. So you can see here that you made a loss of 12 percent. Okay? So you understand that, Scotia? No, what I, what I did here to get from here to here. Oh, I see, I skipped a step, right? 88 percent is 21.49. 1% would be, I take the A, remember you divide by 88 on both sides. Okay? So I divide by 88 on this side to get 1. And, yeah? So that means I have to divide by 88 here too. And, yeah. Right? So I'll, I'll fling the 88 across now. Yeah? So this is 2149 divided by 88. You understand? Yeah. And that's how I got that. Is that the question you was asking? Yeah. All right. Same thing over here, right? 115% is this. Yeah. So therefore, I just divide by 115 on both sides. Eh? Okay. So this 27.45 divided by 115 to get the 1%. You understand, Scotia? Yes, sir. Caitlin, you understand? Yeah. All right. So we're talking about sales. And in sales, we talk about profit and loss, where I mixed up some zeros. I really, really ashamed about that. Um, and then we did a profit and loss question. And then we talked about some percentage changes when it comes to profit and loss and trying to find out where's the percentage change and all of that stuff, right? And uh, now we're going to talk about discounts. And everybody knows what a good discount is. A discount is when you get a certain percentage off of the selling price. So they're selling it for 600, um, but you gain 10% off, which is what $60 off. So you know you'll get it a little cheaper, right? So everybody knows that your discounted price is the selling price minus the discount. And I'm sure we are all quite a um, uh, practiced in calculating selling price. Um, sorry, calculating discount. So a TV is selling at $19.50 and a 10% discount is offered to the customer. What is the sale price of the TV? Notice the selling price is before discount and the sale price is after discount. So how do we do it? 10% of the selling price. Um, yeah, right. Everybody understand, Caitlin? Yeah. Um, Scotia, you, you understand this stuff? Yeah. All right, so nobody needs me to do it, right? Okay. Higher purchase, right? So we're still talking about sales here. And this is a, a form of fraud that many people uh, subscribe to. But... Um, if an item is too expensive, okay, um, you want to buy a fridge. You know how much for a fridge these days? I went and looked for a good fridge, Dread. The cheapest fridge right now is about eight grand. You know? Like eight thousand dollars for a fridge. Yeah, that's too expensive. But I could pay it in higher purchases. That means that what I'll do is I'll pay a small amount every month. So sometimes if I want to buy that fridge, the customer will make a down payment. Yeah. So if the fridge costs an eight thousand, they go tell me, all right, pay one thousand now. So that is my down payment. My down payment is a thousand dollars, followed by monthly installment. So then they go tell me, pay a thousand dollars now and then pay $200 every month for the next 50 months, 36 months, three years, yeah? But watch how much money I'm actually 
actually be spending. Right? And we'll see how pa when you're paying with higher purchase, you're paying small amounts at a time, but after it now, you'll end up spending a lot more for the fridge. Right? So be careful with higher purchase. Always try to buy things cash. Yeah. Um, a customer will always end up paying much, much more for the item. Right? The increase in higher purchase is called the interest. So 200 over 36 months is 7,200. So that's 7,200 I pay in here. Right? Plus the thousand down payment. So I end up paying 8,200 for the fridge. And that seems like a little bit, but nah, a real higher purchase, they just hit you for six. Real money, right? So let me see how much money here. The selling price of a TV is this. If a customer pays cash, right, they get a 12% discount. So the selling price of a TV is that. If a customer pays cash, they get a 12% discount. If the TV is bought on higher purchase, the customer pays a down payment of 628, right? So the down payment, so let me just see the TV here, costing 6980, right? The down payment for higher purchase is 628.20 for 24 months wait no no sorry blah. sorry a down payment of 600 and 620 and then 24 monthly installments of 300 so it's 344 times 24 and 24 monthly installments so can you guys work on where's the higher purchase price here do I have to do this question? The TV costing this, right? How much you're actually paying for the TV if you make a down payment of 20, 6, 20, 8, 20, and then you make 24 monthly payments of six uh, of 344. How much you're actually paying for the TV? Is it 8,804? Mm -hmm. So I take in the, the 628, that's the down payment that I paid and I'm gonna add that to the monthly installment which is 344 oops uh, crap I was that over 628 uh, 0.20 and I'm going to add that to um, 344 times 24 and that is eight thousand eight hundred and eighty four dollars so the TV actually costs $69.80, but at the end of that higher purchase, two years, you actually paid $2,000 more for the TV. Everybody understands how higher purchases work? Yes, sir. All right, all right, nice. Calculator lady, I didn't hear you, right? Um, so we talked about sales there, and we talked about profit and loss percentages we talked about discounts we talked about higher purchase now we're getting into banking right and the first thing that we're gonna talk about with banking is we're gonna talk about um, mortgages now I'll tell you something eh? in terms of CSEC right CSEC will definitely bring discount and higher purchase um, higher purchase and profit and loss they like to bring that but they also love simple interest. I probably have a simple interest question in every CSEC people. So we'll definitely take a look at that. But let me talk about mortgages first because just like higher purchase, you can think about a mortgage as something like higher purchase. Right? Um, you have a piece of land and the piece of land worth a million dollars. Right? You want to buy that piece of land but you don't have a million dollars. So you go to the bank. You go tell the bank, hey, I want a million dollars, right? The bank will say, well, all right, well, you know what? If you could pay 10% of the million dollars, we go pay the other 90%. All 
All right. So I got paid ten percent. So ten percent of a million is what? Which ten percent of a million? I had a cross off from a zero there. One zero. So that is one, two, three, a hundred thousand. Right? Is that right? Or am I doing shit? Right? No, that's right. All right. Yeah. All right. So. So I had to pay a hundred thousand, and that means that I have what nine hundred thousand that the bank will pay, and I'll get my house, right? But guess what? The bank owns ninety percent of the house, right? So I have to pay back now the bank this nine hundred thousand dollars before I own it, right? And sometimes these loans could take ten to twenty-five years to pay back. Somebody, some people can have their house on mortgage for a long time. When you have your house on mortgage, remember you don't own your house. The bank owns it. Yeah? So, a house costing $150,000 can be bought by making a 10% deposit and taking a bank mortgage. So, check it out, right? The deposit is what? 10% of 150. That is 1500. 15,000, sorry, right? So the deposit is 15,000, right? So you're depositing $15,000 now. Um, so the amount you borrow will be what? The deposit 15,000, so the bank paying how much, right? How much, is, how much are you borrowing? How much of the 150 is the bank paying? Come now. Yes, 135,000. The, the 15, the 150 minus 15 is 135,000. So that is how much you borrow, right? The amount paid to the bank, and this is where it is hit your mortgage, right? Because the bank really paid this, eh? The bank paid this, but so you, but, you, but that's not how much you paid back. No, oh, you paid back more. The bank had to make a profit on your head. So the amount paid to the bank, given monthly payments of Twenty-two fifty has to be paid over twenty years. So how much you have to pay back the bank? You owe in the bank one thirty-five. Well, it's not that you owe in the bank one thirty-five. I know, you know, the bank pay one thirty-five for your house. So the bank own that. And the agreement is you have to pay the bank now $22.50 over 20 years. So how much is that? $22.50 a month, eh? $22.50 a month over 20 years. How much is it? Right. Five hundred and forty thousand. So take a look at that now. The house costing a hundred and fifty thousand, you know. But by the end of a twenty-year period, you end up paying five hundred and forty thousand for the house. Yeah. Everybody understands how to work a mortgage. Yeah. Calculator lady. Right, but you're gonna have to do all of this stuff on your own just now, eh? So check it out. We almost done, right? Simple interest, right? So the thing is that you know you're borrowing money from the bank, and let me just say I want, and the bank always had a profit from your head. So if I borrow, um, uh, let me just say a hundred dollars from the bank, right? the bank could charge me twenty-five percent interest. Which means that when I pay back the bank, I actually pay back $125. So the bank making $25 on my head, right? So at the end of the day now, this is what interest is. Interest is that when you borrow money, the bank will add on, yeah? They go add on some money and for you to pay back, you have to pay back more. I think everybody come, uh, knows, right? So. If it is I borrow, um, if it is I borrow, uh, let me just say a hundred dollars from the bank, right? the bank could tell me to pay this back, 
what I had to do is I had to pay 1.5% uh, over a period of time, right? Over a year, right? And I had to take three years to pay it back. Right? So I could borrow $100 from the bank and every year I have to pay 1.5% a rate yeah, for a certain amount of time. Now, this amount of money that I borrowed from the bank, this is called what? What is it called? Printing. All right, everybody know this, right? This here is the rate. This here is the time. This is the formula. The simple interest is principal times rate times well, principal by rate by time over 100. This does come in every C paper. Make sure you know. These are very easy because once you identify what the principal is or the rate and the time is, you just plug it into the formula. Right? Um, sometimes. They will give you the simple interest and they will ask you to find the rate. Sometimes they'll give you the simple interest and they will give you the time and the rate and you have to find what the principle is. So sometimes you have to do some subject of the formula kind of uh, algebra. Right? Algebra does always play a role. Right? So let me talk about this now. A woman borrowed this amount, so that is the principle. Always look for principle rate and time. From a bank at a simple interest rate, look the rate here, of 8% per annum for three years, look the time here. You notice in simple interest questions that is usually used, the rate is usually per annum and the time is usually in years. So to calculate the interest paid, simple interest, principal times rate times the time over 100. So it's the principal times the 8 times 3 over 100 yeah, you just put in the numbers just as they are and you'll get you'll get that right? um, <coughs> so this is the amount of interest and let me work it out anybody need me to work this out or, or, or you guys think you're okay you could do this question all right I guess that means to work it out First thing is calculate the interest paid. So where's the interest paid? Ten thousand. That's the principal. Times eight. The rate times time three over one hundred. What is this calculator, people? Twenty four hundred. So twenty four hundred dollars. This is just the interest, right? Calculate the total amount occurring on the loan. So that is the total amount. That is the total amount that 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 you ended up paying back. Right? So you borrowed ten thousand dollars. You pay back with a simple interest of twenty four hundred. So how much money you're actually paying back was the ten thousand the principal plus the simple interest. And that would be uh it's ten thousand plus twenty four hundred. Twelve four hundred, yeah. Right, so twelve four hundred is how much money you're actually paying back on the loan, and then determine the amount of monthly installments. Determine the amount of each monthly installment. So the monthly installment is over three years. So twelve trees are thirty-six. It's thirty-six months. So this divided by thirty-six will give you a monthly installment. How will you feel about simple interest? Now, as I say, you just have to know this formula here really and truly because if you look at every question, the simple interest on a sum of money invested for six months time at 5% per annum. So you notice the percentage per annum. So you wouldn't use six in terms of the time, you would use a half because that's a half of a year, right? Um, so you're always given a time. You're always given a percentage, a rate, 
and and they this is the actually the simple interest and they want you to work out uh, the money invested which is the principal so let's uh, let me do this one and show you guys how it works right so all you have to know for a simple interest question is simple interest is principal by rate by time over 100 right they tell me here that the simple interest is this so this is the simple interest 1680 right and that is equal to the simple interest on a sum of money a sum of money that is the principal i don't know what the principal is so I'll put the, okay? invested for six months at five percent per annum so the percentage is in years annum so i'll keep the rate as five percent in years but the time, I can't put six. The six is months. I want a time that'll be in years because my rate is in years. So the time is going to be a half of a year, which is six months over 100. Everybody understand how I got this? Okay. Uh, Caitlin, you okay with this? Yeah. Right? And then you just find the principle from there. Um, you just make the principle the subject to the formula. So as I say, all simple interest questions just basically require you to use this formula. But sometimes you wouldn't just be asked to find the simple interest. In this case, they gave you the simple interest and they wanted you to find the principle. In this case, the simple interest on this, look, they give you the principle here, $8,500. Invested over to give you the time here is and this is the simple interest here. So they give you the simple interest, they give you the principal, they give you the time, and they say calculate the rate. Right? So some subject to the formula business here. Everybody okay with this? We almost done. Out of 24 slides, we have 10 more slides to go. Alright? Everybody alright? No? Yeah. Kate, um, Caitlin, you okay? Yeah. Alright, it's a lot of work, I know that. It's all very, very easy. You all want to take a two minute break? No. Alright. Uh, Scotia, you okay? Yeah. You okay with simple interest, right? Yeah. Uh, Shazay, you alright with this, right? Yes, sir. All right, so we're moving on from simple interest to compound interest. Now, this could be a little bit tricky, right? And I definitely ask you guys to, to try to do these questions here, right? So, simple interest when you borrow money from the bank, you just have one principle. One principle that's the amount that we borrow, that's the principle, or the amount that you invest at a rate at a time thing with compound interest is that the principal just change over time <coughs> so let me just say right the principal is invested it will receive interest um, after the first year right so if it is like I invest a hundred dollars right at a rate of 8%, right, for one year, I will receive an interest of what? Over 100. Principal, I rate by time over 100. So over the first year now, right, how much interest I gain here? 8, then? So I'll be getting eight dollars interest here, right? Yeah. So I invested a hundred dollars, and it's like I'm making eight dollars profit. So one o eight. Okay. This is not the simple interest, right? Let me just not confuse you. The interest here, after a cross of this and this, is eight dollars. 
So now I make a profit of eight dollars. I invested a hundred dollars at a rate of eight percent over one year. So I, when I get payback now, I get paid back with an interest of eight dollars. So I get paid back a hundred and eight dollars. Everybody understand this, right? Yeah. All right. So now I take that hundred and eight dollars. And I put that as the principal for the second year now. So the second year, the principal is $108. At the same 8%, it's a same one year period, but it is the second year, right? And now what will I get? Um, I'll end up making uh, one week, what will I be like, $116? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, so basically, um, so what I, what I had meant to say is the simple interest here would have been eight sixty four. So the simple interest here would have been eight sixty four, and I add in that one of eight. And all of this is incredibly messy. So I, I could think about starting over, but how do you feel about the concept? Mm-hmm. All right. So let me um. Let me, let me try it and see with a question, right? So what they're saying here, calculate the compound interest earned and the total amount occurring when I invest this $10,000 at 8% annum over three years, right? So let me just see. Um, principal is over three years, but it's compound interest. So that means I have to work it out every year each year the principal times the rate times the first year over 100 and that is what was the interest here um, 20. you show sure how because these two are gonna cancel right and I'm gonna get 100 times 8 which is 800 and eh? am I doing that wrong <laughs> 800 right so 800 is this interest right so that means that after the first year now I will have made $10,800 and I'm going to take that as the principal for the second year times 8 times 1 so this is the second year over 100 right? so um, how much will I get here now wait so these two are going to cancel. 108 times 8. I think it's 1,728. Mm. I get 864. 864. 864. Because these two will cancel. Right? So it's 108 times 8, which is 864, right? So that 864, remember, is being added to that principle. So what did you say it was? Um, yeah, so 10, 800 plus the interest I made, which is 864, is equal to 1166. And then I'm going to take this and plug it in as use that as my principal for the third year times eight times one <laughs> all over 100 now where's the interest here now right. times eight is equal to that divided by 100 is equal to 933.12 I want to add that to that. Then after three years, after investing ten thousand dollars, after three years, I am walking away with plus eleven six six four. Right. <clears throat> so I am walking away with this twelve thousand. So I invest a hundred. And what if we? What if I had invested? Um, and use simple interest over three because this compound interest so we're calculating the interest every year we're using 
the, the, the previous principle as the, the principle of the previous year as the new year's principle right the, the interest right so what if i had done simple interest so ten thousand times the rate but just over the three years one time would i have gotten more money what would that be 800 times three which is 20 2400 right yeah so then i would have made um and then i would have had to add the 10,000 to the 2400 so i would have made 12400 so if it, if i had used simple interest over the over the three years i would have made 12400 and if i used compound interest i made a little bit more 12 um 597 Right? So everybody understands the concept of compound interest? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> now you see how you see how we found, you know, we did the three year thing. We find for each year using the, you know, that kind of thing. Well, it have a formula that is do it all for us. Right? So A is the amount of money after N years. Oh, just now. Yeah? <laughs> so, yeah. A is the amount of money after N years. So that's kind of where you want to find. P is the principal, right? R is the rate, and N is the number of years. So let's look at the exact same question here, but use the formula, right? So how much money will I get? A is equal to the principal, 10,000, into 1 plus the rate, which is 8 over 100, that is 8% all to the power of three. Anybody wake it up? Is it one Well, yeah, that's inside of here, right? So this to the power of three is going to be 1.259, eh? 1.259712. And then you, uh, you multiply that by 10,000, and you'll end up getting the 12,597.12, which is what we got previously. One here. So here we got the 12597 by actually working out each year after each year. So what did we do? This here is a nice handy um, method if you can't remember the compound interest formula. If you care, because they don't always ask, I don't, I don't have, hardly ever see compound interest questions in, in CSEC. I see more simple interest. So you notice what I did here, you understand the principle of it. So we use the simple interest formula and we found for each year right and we just added it on right in order to get the compound interest so if you can't remember the compound interest formula you could just use the simple interest formula and do it this long way. but if you do remember this formula by some miracle right and please write it down and make a formula sheet for for this topic right if you do remember this formula, then you can see how easy the question is. The question is just that. Right? So everybody cool with compound interest? Yes. Come on, we're almost yes. done. We have nine nine things to do again. Depreciation, right? Um, oh, by the way, this term, because we have so much work to do, you can expect that most classes will be going over time. Eh? So prepare yourself for that. Right? I'll try not to go over time the t today, but I, I, I suspect in we might have to go a little five minutes, right? So depreciation is when you buy a car. I buy a car for a thousand, let me say ten thousand dollars, I buy a car for brand new. But guess what? The second I buy that car, it's not gonna be worth ten thousand anymore because I drive it in the road, it hit pothole, it gets scratched. So the very minute I buy a $10,000 car, the second you drive out of the new car lot, the price of that car is starting to go down because it is now a used car. And a used car can be more than a brand new car. So this is called depreciation. When it is that you use an item and the, the price of the item is going to decrease the more that you have that item in your hands. Do you understand what depreciation means? Yeah. Right? 
right? And depreciation has a formula, and this is the formula for depreciation. Um, and you can see it's kind of like the compound interest formula. In fact, it's pretty much the same, except that there's a minus here, right? So we're talking about the book value, right? So the book value is the um, the, 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 the value of the current value after it's been depreciated, right? So the book value is the how, how much it costs right now. The principal is how much it has cost brand new. The rate, well, is the rate of depreciation per annum. And well, n is number of years, right? So we, we have this formula here, and it's just to apply that. So let me apply it there. What is the formula? A, P1, blah, blah, blah. So A is equal to P into 1 minus R over 100 all to the power of n depreciation the car was bought for 27 so a is equal to 27,000 into 1 minus at a rate of 5 percent per annum right calculate the book value after three years right somebody hit me what the car is worth after three years then 0.95 so inside of the brackets is actually 0.95 so 0.95 cubed is actually 0 0.8573 multiplied by 27123 is something similar 23,149 dollars so after three years you can see the price of the car drop Everybody understand depreciation? Yes. <clears throat> right. Yes. We reached yes. the last topic, utilities. Well, it's kind of the second to last topic, but um, utilities should be easy, right? Now, it just just to recap, in terms of banking, we talked about mortgages, simple interest, compound interest, and depreciation. And uh, now we're going to talk about utilities. And, well, utilities is pretty easy. <laughs> well, let me talk about water rates, right? Water rates. Now, take a look at this question. A man used 105 cubic meters of water for the first half of the year. Water rates for domestic users are as follows. Right? $2.50 $2 per cubic meter for the first 25 years. You gotta pay two dollars for the next fifty, and then anything over that, you gotta pay one dollar and fifty cents. Right? So, how much you pay for this water? Right? But it, it, it's not like they just charge. They don't charge for water by the cubic meter. It kind of have a system where the first twenty-five cubic meters they have one price. And then the next 50 cubic meters, they have a next price. And then the rest, right? Anything above that, right? So what I'll do is I'll take my 150, oh, sorry, 105, and I'll represent it by this bar here. This full bar represents 105 meter cube, right? So for the first 25 meter cube, so the first 25 is about here in that bar, right? So this is the first 25 meter cube. Right? I am paying 250 per meter cube. So that's 250 times 25. So how much I pay? 250 times 25 is 62.50. Everybody understand how I got that? Ariel, you okay? Yeah. Alright. Um, then, $2 for the next 50. So from 25, I have the next 50. So if I start on 25 and I go 50 meter cube, I go end up here on 75, eh? So this yeah. here, 75 meter cube. So for this 50 section over here, it's 
two dollars per um, by fifty two dollars for one meter cube by fifty meter cube. So I pay a hundred dollars for this section. Everybody cool, eh? Yeah. So how much I do for the rest now? Well, is one dollar and fifty cents per meter cube for anything in excess of seventy-five. So you see, I done reach the seventy-five here. So anything in excess. So remember, this is one hundred five in the end. So seventy-five to one hundred five is thirty. We have left thirty meter cube of water, and this thirty meter cube of water are getting the cheapest at a dollar and fifty cents per meter. Cube. A dollar and fifty cents by thirty is equal to forty. So how much I pay for the full one hundred five? I pay that sixty-two fifty times one hundred times forty-five. That is equal to ooh, no, not time. Sorry, I was multiplying yes, and sixty-two fifty plus one hundred plus forty-five. $207.05. How do you feel about it now? Good? Yeah, much better. Alright. Now take a look at what we had to do. We have about one, two, three, four, five slides. Do I want to do it now or do I want to do it Saturday? If we do it now, it might take like 10 minutes. All right, I like that, right? So, we're talking about utilities here. We just talk about water rates, and we saw that it's a little bit tricky, so just pay attention to this. And you can see I just have to use this kind of visual way of doing it, right? In order for me to understand what I'm doing, I just use this visual way of doing it, right? Um, and anything like this, because telephone bills are something like this as well, yeah? And, uh, and you'll see other bills are like this, right? But um, mail courier, so the rates for posting a letter in to the US in 2002 were as follows, right? The letters exceeding 10 um, grams, you had to pay this, right? Each additional 10 gram or part thereof, you have to pay this. Right? So just now, let me see something. Uh, plus you had to pay this registration fee right so what if I asked you to calculate how much you have to pay to post an unregistered letter of 27 grams how would I work that up you take the first 10 grams and 27 grams and you put just now wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Not just now, it have a little mistake here, not exceeding, and I thought so, right? I thought so. So that's a big change there. Letters that not exceeding. So read over the question again and reassess where you was going to I had a feeling something was wrong there, so I just checked it back, yeah? So letters that not exceeding. So anything less than 10 grams, you're paying this. Anything less than 10 grams. Once it's less than 10 grams. If it's more than 10 grams, right? Each additional 10 gram or any part thereof, you pay in this. And then you have your registration. So come again with, with what you were saying there, Shizzy. Well, one thing though, when they say that it's not exceeding 10 grams, you're doing this one like the water rate in that. Yes, yes, yes. For the first 10 Yeah, so for the first 10 grams, you're paying this. And then in each additional 10 gram or part thereof, you're paying okay. this. It would be 50 cents for the first 10 grams plus 20 cents for the other, well, plus 40 cents for the other 17 grams. 50 cents. Right, for the first 10 grams and then for the next 10 grams so I have 20 grams here so I have to pay 20 cents here and then I have 7 grams remaining but I still have to pay a next 20 cents here alright sorry right. 
So that is 50 and 40 is 90 cents I had to pay, right? Yes, sir. For unregistered letter, right? And if it was registered, I just add the registration fee, yeah? Right. So Scotia, how are you feeling about this? Good. Good. Um, Caitlin? Did your did your show start? Huh? Your show start? Yeah. You don't have a show. You just watch eight o'clock, and you're real vexed that you had to stay in math class. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Um, nice. So we're almost done, right? So we're talking about utilities. We just talked about water rates, mail couriers, and we're talking the electric bill. The electric bill is this kind of same kind of business. A little bit different though. But first, we had to learn some lingo. So check the lingo, right? Electricity is measured in watts. A watt for anybody who does physics, and I love physics. I can actually teach physics better than maths. Um, a watt is a unit of power. That's how we just measure power in watts, right? A thousand watts is one kilowatt. This is the stuff you have to know. You have to know this. Thousand watts is one kilowatt, right? It is usually charged by the hour. Right? So, one thousand watt hours is one kilowatt hour, right? So, this here is a charge by the hour. I take, like, let me just say, I use one thousand watts in one hour then what I used is one kilowatt hour. Everybody understands that? <coughs> yeah. All right. So a kilowatt hour means that I used 1000 watts in one hour. And these kilowatt hours are called units. So if I used 1000 watts in an hour, then that means I used one kilowatt in an hour. I used one kilowatt hour, which is one unit. It's supposed to be an equal sign. So everybody understands what one unit is? Yeah. So check this out. How many units of electricity would a five kilowatt heater use in seven hours? How many units of electricity would a 5 kilowatt heater use in 7 hours? Remember how I got it here. A thousand kilowatts in one hour. This gives me one kilowatt hour. So 5 kilowatts. Seven hours is what? Is No, it's 35 kilowatt hours. Right? Remember, this is already kilowatts. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would have been 5,000 watts, but it's already in kilowatts. Yeah? Right? So just take a look at that. Be careful with that, right? So I have 5 kilowatts in 7 hours. So the unit is 35 kilowatt hours, which is 35 units of electricity. Everybody understand? Yes. A 60 watt bulb over 84 hours is how much? Because you want your units to be in kilowatt hours, eh? So you want kilowatts to be multiplied by hours in order to get your kilowatt hour. 60 watts is how much kilowatts? Because 1,000 watts is 1 kilowatt, right? So 1 watt is going to be 1 over 1,000, right? Which is, yeah? So therefore, 60 watts is going to be 60 over 1,000. Right? So 6 over 100 um, kilowatts. So this is 6 over 100 kilowatts, right? 
multiply by 84. So 6 divided by 100 is 0 0.06. So 0 0.06 kilowatts times 84 gives us 5.04 kilowatts, kilowatt hours, which is 5.04. So the point is that you have to make sure that these watts are kilowatts because you want the kilowatt hour in order to find your units. How do you feel about this? Slightly tricky, but it's worth it. Okay, um, yeah, you okay, uh, Caitlin? Yeah. Scotia? Yeah. All right. Don't worry, we're almost done. A last one, actually, no, it's just, just one more after this, right? Oh, this is just a same electric bill thing. Check this out. Calculate the monthly electric bill for the following household. Assume that there is a standing charge of $35.90, right? So that means that no matter how much electricity you use, even if you turn off all the lights and all of the power in your house, you still have to pay that $35.90. Yeah? So you have to pay the $35.90 plus whatever how much units of electricity that you use. So the $35.90 is like a deposit you just make every month or whatever. Right? So you have a standing charge of $35.90. Right? And look, they tell you here, off peak units are sold at half price so mr diego here right during peak hours he used 245 units of electricity during off peak hours he used 793 units of electricity it looked like he's a man that's watched plenty TV in the night. And the cost for one unit is 15 cents per unit. So what is his electric bill? So Scotia, you see in this line, off-peak units are sold at half price, huh? Yeah. Right. So how much did he pay for peak units? Well, he paid 245 multiply by 15 per unit and eh? 15 yeah. cents so 245 multiply by 15 cents and let me call 15 cents what it is 15 cents is 0.15 right that's 15 cents and the off peak he paid half price so we see half price of 15 cents that is 7.5 eh? right. so that is point just on 7 cents could be 0, 07 and then 5.07 right but if you if you want we know how to do that we can just multiply by 15 and multiply by 7.5 15 and 7.5 but just know that these are cents you're dealing with right and then you'll get how much money that you have for the peak and then how much money he had in the off peak yeah and you add them in and that's the answer right so very good you have um this multiplied by the 15 cents to give you the peak hours the amount of money he paid during the peak hours this multiplied by half price to give you the amount of money he paid in off peak hours. You add your peak hours to your off peak hours and then you add the standing charge of 3590. And that will give you his electric bill. You understand, Scotia? Alright, Caitlin, you alright? Huh? You alright, Caitlin? Yeah. Alright, nice. Um, she say, you okay? You sleep away? Yes, sir. Last, uh, the very last one. 
So we talk about utilities, the electric bill, mail, water rates. And now we're gonna talk about foreign exchange. This here is uh, the last topic. And I think that we all came across foreign exchange at some point in time. I'm not, I don't think this is the rate right now. I think this was the rate like maybe five years ago. I think right now the rate is like seven dollars and something cents, right? But one, but let's just take these rates for now. One US is six dollars and thirty cents TT. One Canadian is four dollars and ninety cents TT. One British pound is eleven dollars and fifty cents TT. Right? So when you convert money from US to Canadian, guess what? You just have to pay a 10% tax. Every dollar that you convert, you had to pay 10% on that. That 10% goes to the bank most of the time, right? Or the government or wherever you're changing the money. Yeah? So a tourist, <coughs> A tourist US of 1000 into TT currency. Calculate the tax paid for the transaction and the amount of TT he received. So a tourist want to convert $1,000 US dollars into TT currency. $1,000 US dollars into TT currency. Right. How much tax he paid? just for the transaction alone. How do we work that out? Um, 1,000 divided by 10. Right, 1,000 divided by 10. Um, could we work that out in TT? Actually, that was... Um... Mm? So with your multiplying, you get this fully changing it to TT to see how much you use in TT and get in charge of 10 cents on the dollar. Yes, just now, let me see, right? Yeah, so what you should do is you should convert to the TT first and then find where 10% of the TT because remember, it's how much, um, how much TT he received after, right? So he reached Trinidad then. And he given Trinidad a thousand dollars, right? Right. So he reached Trinidad and he give a thousand US. And according to this exchange rate, he is expecting to get back six thirty times a thousand. One, two, three. He says he is expecting to get back six thousand three hundred TT. Yeah. Yeah. But he won't. He won't get back this because he will be taxed 10% of this. Yeah? So that is, that is where the tax coming in. So where's 10% of this? And I, I wonder I wonder if it will let me work it the, the both ways and see. I wonder if Ariel's way will work for it. So 10%. Multiply by 6310. Is six hundred and thirty dollars. So how much is he actually getting? Sixty-three hundred minus six thirty is equal to fifty-six. Let me see if we did it Ariel's way. If we had found the ten percent of one thousand, ten percent of a thousand is a hundred. Right? So that means that 900, I don't think it would have worked out yet. 900 times 630, 6.3. 900 times 6.3. Yeah, it will work out. Exactly the same. Yeah? So I guess, I guess you can definitely make the, the, the tax deduction on either side. And it will work out to be the same thing. Just to be safe though, I just normally just convert because and the reason why to be safe is because that is what the textbook telling me. You know? And how they do it in the textbook here, they convert the money first, then they find the deduction, right? So everybody cool with foreign exchange? Yeah. Right. 
So yeah. the very last slide, we have one, two, three, four easy simple interest questions for you to practice your simple interest. The reason why I give you simple interest questions specifically is because they always bring simple interest for CSEC. And these questions here are CSEC pass questions, right? So take a look at these four simple interest questions. So just a quick recap, we did uh, consumer arithmetic today. We started with wages, salaries, basic wage, overtime. We talked about commissions. We talked about taxes, income tax, VAT, land and building tax. We talked about profit and loss in the bank, um, sorry, in sales percentages and discounts higher purchase then we went to the bank with mortgages simple interest compound interest depreciation utilities we talked about water rates courier electric bills foreign exchange and then we have some questions here. 